Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the Mid-Atlantic Pain Network. Today's topic is radiofrequency ablation for back and neck pain treatment. Back pain affects 90% of Americans at some point in life. It's the second most common reason people go to the doctor and the leading cause of disability in those under the age of 45. Up to 40% of those who undergo back surgery end up with a failed back surgery. And also neck pain affects about 10% of the population at one point in time, up to 45% each year. The cervical and lumbar facet joints you can see in this cartoon here, basically you have thumbnail sized joints on either side of the spine at every level all the way up and down. They do provide a ton of motion for the spine collectively. They are prone to arthritis just like any other cartilage bearing joint. They are the cause of back and neck pain 45% of the time. You know, the disc is also responsible for a certain percent. The SI joint is also response, responsible for a certain percent. And we really don't have a successful joint replacement for those facet joints. So to make the diagnosis of facet joint arthritis, it's also called facet joint syndrome, involves a combination of history, physical examination, x-rays, CAT scan, and maybe a diagnostic block. You can see here, these look very clean, these facet joints on a CAT scan. And then here you have kind of a ratty appearance, it's starting to lose its joint space. That's facet arthritis. Okay. So it can be a coin toss. Even the best trained, board certified, fellowship trained spine doctors get the diagnosis wrong 50% of the time as to why somebody is having back pain. You may have very severe pain with just a little bit of arthritis or vice versa. So a diagnostic injection can be very helpful and this involves a medial branch block which is where numbing medicine goes around the joint to numb up these little nerve endings supplying sensation. These are called the medial branches. That's why it's called the medial branch block. If that works and then uh, wears off, it may be that the person ends up needing a radiofrequency ablation to provide thermal en energy, heat, and deaden these nerves. You can also do a facet block, which involves putting the needle right into the facet joint and injecting some numbing medicine and steroid there. That's also very effective. So if you get a positive result, some say it's 50% pain relief, some say it's 80%. Some insurance companies require two separate injections of 80% pain relief. Uh, by the way, this says you are leaving pain. Enjoy the journey. So a medial branch block in and of itself can provide pain relief for three months on average. Okay, but so it's diagnostic and therapeutic. If it wears off, the person can then go on to a radiofrequency ablation. So other names for radiofrequency ablation include radiofrequency neurotomy, medial branch neurotomy, medial branch thermocoagulation, denervation, lesioning. All these mean the same thing. Here's five facts about radiofrequency ablation. The current used in the procedure is the same wavelength as radio signals, but there is no FM radio involved unless there just happens to be one in the room. It can actually be more painful right afterwards than the person was having before, and typically that gets better uh, over the next week. It can provide pain relief for upwards of 18 months to two years. You do need to have that diagnostic injection prior, um, and it has been a revolutionary treatment for back and neck pain. So what exactly does it do? Well, here's the facet joint. You can see the capsule around it. Okay, we're looking at it from the side here. And these are the medial, this is a nerve root, okay? But this is a medial branch nerve endings coming in and supplying sensation. So you're not dealing with the nerve root, that would be bad. You're only dealing with these medial branch nerve endings that supply sensation to the joint. And that's what the probe goes in and heats up and deadens. So the newest machines, you can treat multiple areas at one time. So under x-ray, which is called fluoroscopy, continuous x-ray, these needles are placed okay the pain doctor will do an initial stimulation to make sure that the um, catheters are not too close to an actual nerve root and then uh, does the actual thermocoagulation so it's usually 80 degrees celsius for about 90 seconds and that uh, is pretty standard although when you start getting into different body parts which we'll talk about in a moment you're definitely going to want to decrease that heat so it, it's outpatient. The procedure overall takes about an hour or less. So what are the results? Well, studies show that on average it provides about 15 months of pain relief. It can be upwards of two years. 
it's definitely much longer lasting than steroid injections. Uh, patients end up with a greater range of motion, decreased need for narcotics, and a very short recovery time from the procedure. Potential complications include increased pain for a week or so because of spasms. Uh, a person can have increased pain for months, but that only happens less than 5% of the time. If the pain doctor only partially deadens the nerve, uh, that can be an issue. You can have some temporary numbness of the skin over the procedure site. Very rare, some spinal cord trauma. Um, as I mentioned, the average pain relief in one study was 15 months at 472 days. And actually, another study shows that if you do a repeat procedure, you can get the same expected result. The top non-operative pain management in the Mid-Atlantic Pain Region is the Mid-Atlantic Pain Network. There are several clinics throughout the region. There's actually many, in fact. Over 50 insurances are accepted, and over 25 treatment options are provided with the board-certified uh, pain management doctors. Visit us online today at midatlanticpainnetwork.com. And then call us for more information and scheduling at 855-444-6585. I'm Dr. David Green with the Mid-Atlantic Pain Network. Your pain stops here.